Good morning. Anybody else awake? I heard one good morning. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Good to see everyone smiling faces, smile real big. You know, it takes more muscles to frown than it does to smile, so you might as well smile. Amen. Praise the Lord. We, uh, it's been a blessed week. We want to thank everyone that helped uh, take all the Christmas decor down. Uh, it was just a little bit of a process yesterday, but we're thankful for everyone that helped and uh, thankful always as our uh, ladies that clean the church for us, and they always do a fantastic job and uh so uh but this morning as we before we go in the lord of prayer we need to lift up anna lee uh she's in the emergency room this morning and um she's been battling the last few days and we just want to lift her up in prayer and uh hopefully uh we can get over there and hear in a little bit and pray over in person but uh for now let's stand this morning let's go before the lord in prayer and then we'll Yes, Rose. Pray for Renee. Uh, Renee is a lady that uh, my wife used to take care of. She's in the hospital as well. And uh, we just want to pray for her as well. Amen. Father God, we just thank you. We bless you. We honor you this morning, Father. We thank you so much for the privilege and the opportunity to be in your house of worship one more time, Lord God. Lord, we just lift up these requests before your throne of grace and mercy tonight, Lord God, Jesus. Lord, we just lift up... Anna Lee, Lord God, Jesus, we just ask that you reach down in that hospital room, wherever she's at, Lord God, and we ask that you touch and that you heal her by your mighty might and your mighty power, Father God. We ask you to also reach down and touch Renee, Lord God, Lord, that you just touch her, Lord God, Jesus, and heal her and minister to her, Lord God, minister to these families, Lord God. Lord, we thank you for it, Lord God, Jesus. We honor you for it, Lord God, and we just invite your sweet Holy Spirit into this place, this morning father to have your will and have your way lord god jesus mm -hmm. lord and we just give you all the honor and the glory and the praise in the mighty name of jesus we pray amen and amen praise the lord let's worship the lord this morning church just lift your hands all over this house just lift your hands and, and welcome the holy ghost into this place hallelujah i am amazed I am amazed at the Lord and what he can do. I'm amazed at what God is doing in this house right now. Feel his presence. Enjoy his presence. Know that the Lord is about to do many miraculous things in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Shut the rubber. Shut the
That's right. Just give the Lord a hand clap of praise. It's all about Him. We're here to worship the Lord Jesus only. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I asked a pastor one time as I'm preparing this next song. I asked a pastor one time, and it wasn't our, our blessed uh, brother, brother Mark, but it was an, a pastor a long, long time ago when I was young. And, and I said, I said, Brother Dickie, can, can we bless God? Can we bless him? You know what his response was to me? He said, Jeff, I don't know, but I'll find out. You know, you don't always have to know everything. So he went, and he did some research, and he said, yes, Jeff, you can bless God. You can bless God. You can bless God by your I feel the Holy Ghost. You can bless God by your praise of Him and the mighty works that He's done in your life.
of you know that Jesus' name is power. Jesus' name is power. Jesus' name is power. Filled with wonder. Awestruck wonder. get away from this. There's somebody that came in here with a heavy heart, a heavy spirit. You need to just lift that up before the Lord this morning. As the Holy Spirit is in this place, I just can't get away from this this morning. In the name of Jesus, I just feel it. Your heaviness, you, you just brought it in with you. You said, God, I don't know what I can do, but I can tell you what you can do. Just lift it up before the Lord, and the Lord will help break it off your life this morning. He'll help break it off your heart. He'll help break it off your mind. In the mighty name of Jesus, just lift it up this morning before the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on. If you need to come up front, we'll pray with you. We'll pray with you. That's up to you. That's up to you. I can't force you. But in the name of Jesus, know that you don't have to continue through this service with a heavy heart, with a heavy mind, with a heavy spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, just lift it up before the Lord. Lift it up. Lift it up in the mighty name of Jesus. Break it off. Break it off. Just shake off, as that old song used to say, shake off those heavy bands and lift up those holy hands. In the name of Jesus, just shake it off. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Break it in the name of Jesus. Come on, in the name of Jesus.
believe there's some more, church. I believe there's some more. Just speak the name of Jesus at your seat, right where you're at. Hallelujah. The most powerful name. The, 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 the name, hallelujah, above every name. Jesus Christ. through a lot of things, but that's okay. I'll get there. I'm going. I'm not stopping. You don't stop it in the middle. You keep on going. But I just, the reason I was late is my sister-in-law called and somebody hung two ropes and made a noose out of it in my brother's backyard. That's dangerous, Brother David. That's dangerous. They live in a little old horse town that I grew up in with one stop sign. I want to tell you something. You be careful online because my brother's old. He's a lot older than I am. But he's, he's about five years older than I am. He's an old man and he can't have here and he agreed to some stuff with some scammers. You be careful online. You be very careful. And then today, they find this loose, loose noose, whatever you call that thing. They're going to hang him, that's what I say. But you know what? I told her, I said, this is how you pray. 
And I said, you begin to pray and rebuke the devourer in the name of Jesus Christ. You begin to say, no man, no woman, no nothing will walk on my land without God's permission. And you've got to take authority. And uh, I, I liked what uh, the pastor said the other day when he said, you can't serve God part-time with a, a, on, how'd you say that? Say it. I got him tickled now. You can't. There you go. In this service, we're going back to that song. Don't leave that song, Jeff. Okay. We're going back to holy, holy, holy. And I tell you what, you better make a new commitment unto Christ this morning. You know what? I, I believe I've been saved for a long time. But you know, every other day or so, I have to get down and pray again and just ask the Lord to be with me every step of the way. And I know a lot of you are new and a lot of you are, are new to Pentecost. But let me tell you something. It is the best thing you can ever do in your life. This is the best thing you can ever do. The other thing that you have to know is that God is faithful. I never thought I'd walk the journey I'm walking now. But my God has been faithful to me. He has been faithful in every situation. Who else walks in a job and says, I need a job and I won't work but 10 to 2 and I don't work weekends and I don't work nights. And I don't because they gave me the job. That's God. You know, but listen, as time goes on, my Jesus is coming. And we've heard this all my life. I was so, I was so, when I married my, my husband at 18, I was so convinced that my first son that I had would never get to graduate high school because Jesus would come. And here I have grandchildren graduating, children graduating from colleges and all this stuff. I never believed we'd be here, but we are. And he says, work until the day I come. And it is time for us to lift up this church and go forth in your Christian duty. You know what? We've been lazy Christians way too long. I work with some of the, uh, some of the, I work with these boys, I tell you. And some of them are the nastiest mouth things I ever heard in my life. They're very good to me. They love me. But I think we got to get in touch with these young people. And I, that's 30-year-olds is what I'm talking about. Because, you know, I'm old, so. But holy, holy is the Lord. And I, and I felt, when I walked in, I felt the Spirit moving in this house. And I'm, I've been taking a break. I, I told my pastor son that I just needed to be quiet for a while. And now here I am breaking my quiet. But anyway, can't help it. But anyway, but if, I, if there's anything true in this world, it's Jesus Christ. You better get yourself prepared and ready. And I want to tell you something. Those lost loved ones in your family, you better pray day and night for them. Because hell is real. But heaven is better. <laughs> And I want you to close your eyes and, and, and just sing along with us, or at least hum it. Because holy, 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 holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is to come. He's coming. He's coming. With all creation, I see. And we, you know what? We, we got where we left that. We left it. We left it. We say, oh, yeah, he's coming. But then we go about our day like we don't even know that Jesus is alive. We don't even speak to him sometimes. I want you to make that new commitment this morning. And I'm probably taking too much time, but that's all right. I want you to make that new commitment, God. I'm going to do everything I can in my power to be what you would have me to be. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come, yeah, all creation I see, praise is to the King and King, you are my everything, and I am.
Father God, we just praise you now. We give you our song. We give you our praise. We give you our joy. We give you our peace. We give you anything and everything that we are. Lord, whatever we might want to be. And maybe we have fallen and maybe we have got up and maybe we have not got up. But I pray, oh God, over this congregation this morning. I pray over them, oh God, that right now a renewed spirit will come into their minds and into their hearts. And you will bring forth your power in their lives, oh God. Lord, we live in a dangerous situation, but there's no fear because we serve you. And we thank you, God, for that. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, my God, I love you, Lord, and I praise your holy name, and I magnify you, and I thank you. I want you to take, and I want you to stand up, and I want you to go link your arms. Front, front, middle, second, back. Come on, you come together, and we're going to lift up a praise. There you go, come on. Get up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stretch, Karen, my little short thing. Praise the Lord. The worship team and I are going to pray for you right now. And we're just going to believe. I don't want to see it. Ooh. Oh, sister, don't you feel it? I feel it. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm being bold this morning. I want these five right here. Pastor, bring your crew up. Bring your crew up. <laughs> well, they're here. They're under Woo, you this the morning. Great crew. <laughs> Turn around. I want you to start walking. Get up. And we're going they're gonna pray for you. There's oil behind you if you want the oil. If not, that's okay too. Come on, Remington. You start it, baby doll. Come, come let them pray for you. Come on, Ty. Excuse me. You know, I'm your other mother, so cool it. All right. I believe in covering our, our children with the blood, don't you, Cassie? You want to go down to three, four, two? Go. Michelle, Kim, Steve, y'all want to come on down? Come on down. There you go. Absolutely. That's my sweet girl. Don't hesitate. Don't wait. <laughs> I love my girls. I love my boys, too. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Come on. Don't wait all day. We'll, you'll be here until 4 o'clock, and you'll be going, well, I didn't get to eat lunch. Well, oh, well. Hallelujah, Jesus. 
I believe children need to be in, in the Word. I believe yeah. they need to be in this kind of service more than children's church. I am so proud of my teachers in this church. You're doing a fabulous job. But they need to see the power of God. Come on, get up. Y'all, come on. Get me on. Get up here. Y'all need prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hello, Kelly. You're beautiful. Hallelujah.
mindset. Every 
We got the best looking people in town. You see how pretty our people are, Jeff? Oh, yes. Gorgeous bunch of people. You have risen from the dead and you I believe the Lord has met with us this morning. I believe the burdens that you laid down at his feet this morning are answered. I believe that God is God. We shook off those heavy bands this morning, and God is God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Brother Bobby and Brother Tommy, get ready, please. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Y'all let me have a little fun now. Oh, I'm going to have fun all, all morning. What can I say? Hallelujah. Let's pray. Pray over the tithes and offerings. Oh, here we go. Dr. Wolf. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we are praying over the offerings. Is that right? And tithes. And, tithes. and whatever else they want to give. And whatever else you want to give. Anything else? <laughs> I'm just waiting for instruction. <laughs> Know what the scripture says it says about tithes in malachi and it also says that i am the lord and i change not i am the lord it's it's a new testament deal the lord does not change it's his will for us to pay tithes and he said you're robbers you're robbers now are there any robbers in here so that means everybody in here tithes if you don't tithe, you're a robber. And the scripture, see, I'm visiting. I can say stuff. <laughs> but it's true. It's true. And what happens when the thief is found? He has to repay seven times. So would you rather pay 10% or 70% to the devil? Make a choice. And when we give, when we sow seed into the kingdom, the word in 2 Corinthians, uh, the ninth chapter, tells us that he supplies seed to the sower and bread to the eater, and he will give you seed and more seed and more seed if you are a happy, joyful, quick-to-give giver. And even if you don't feel real joyful at first, you think, oh, do I have to? 
you put that smile on your face and do it by faith. Do it by faith. Father, we thank you for every tither, every tithe, every offering in this building. And as a visiting priest, I speak a blessing upon each one of those that they be multiplied and their seed be multiplied, the devourers rebuked. In Jesus' name, the windows of heaven flow. Amen and amen. Come on, church, just stretch your hands this way in the mighty name of Jesus.
praise church. Praise the Lord. Our kids can go out with the teachers for just a little bit. I'm going to ask Rachel to go ahead and minister the word this morning. Um, I was debating. I know what time it is. If you've already looked at your watch, I'm sure you have. But uh, I know what time it is. But please, we've been challenging from the very beginning of this year for us to get back to the Word of God. It's important. It's essential for you and I as believers that we receive the Word in our hearts, amen, and in our lives. So with that in mind, just worship the Lord, amen. Praise the Lord. I feel like the Holy Spirit's already preached my message this morning. But, you know, I, I do want to make sure that you get what God... And it's funny because I was like, God, this is so simple. You know, and normally it always is. <laughs> uh, we make things too hard, don't we? We make them way too hard. I just want to pray first this morning. Jesus, Lord God, touch me, your vessel. God, I just want to focus on you this morning. I just want to be your voice this morning, Lord God. I just want to tell them what you told me, Lord God. And I want them to feel what I felt yesterday, Lord God. There's nothing more in my heart, Lord God, that I want from you this morning besides your precious presence this morning, Lord God. Jesus, we love you and we give you all the glory and all the honor this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, tell you what, <laughs> I'm not going to apologize because you know what? It's through tears that I feel the Lord. <laughs> it's through tears and laughter yesterday that I heard my daddy's laugh again. <laughs> I told Jeff, I said, I heard my daddy laugh again. It was through me. And he said, <laughs> and he goes, that's the Holy Spirit, baby. That's the anointing of God. And I was like, thank you, Jesus. You know, and, um, but the Lord told me to tell y'all that, and Mama's already said it this morning, that he's a faithful God. <laughs> he is a faithful God. He is faithful. He is loyal. He is a trustworthy God. He is a steadfast God. And he wanted me to make sure this morning that you knew that he's not just faithful sometimes. He's faithful all the time. He's not just faithful in this generation. He was faithful before our generation. He was faithful in my daddy's generation. He was faithful in your grandpa's generation. And he will be faithful in your generation. And he will be faithful in the next generation. We need to speak it as though it is. Amen. That's faith. Faith. I did not even know that today was the decoration of Faith Sunday, but God knew that, and God, this is what God wanted. I'm just going to hop to Hebrews chapter 11. It says that now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good report. If you want a good report today, don't go to the news. If you want a good report, don't go, I'm sorry, brother, don't go to your doctor. But Jesus' name, if you want a good report, you go to your heavenly Father. You go to the physician's physician, amen. I believe there's good doctors too, amen. And you go to the Word of God, amen. You go to your Word. If you want a good report today, you need to be in the Word of God. Just as brother told me earlier, he spoke that to me the first of this year. He said, Rachel, my people are suffering because they're not in there getting their daily bread. We're living on a loaf of bread we might get on Sunday morning. Trying to live on that for the rest of the whole week because we're not in the word and we're not praying like we need to do and I'm just as guilty sometimes as anybody else I have a job I have kids I have grandkids I have everything probably you do you know and sometimes it's hard but let me tell you what it's worth it it's worth it you've got to get up this has been my goal every morning it's hard you got to get up first thing in the morning 
you know, first thing in the morning, you got to get up. And uh, sometimes I give myself like less than 20 minutes to get to work. I ain't even going to lie because I don't like to get out of bed. First of all, I know Rachel going to need her coffee because you don't want to speak to me unless I have it. <laughs> and so, yeah. But then the second thing, I'm like, dear Lord Jesus, you know, I get, I grab my phone and my glasses because I can't see to read without them. And that's a whole other story. But <laughs> anyway, I grab my phone, and the first thing I'm like, Rachel, don't you look on Facebook. Don't you look on YouTube. Don't you look on Twitter. Don't you look on Instagram. Don't you look on anything else. But you look, and I have the Bible. If you don't got the Bible on your phone, I highly suggest you install the app. It's free. There's used version. There's all kinds of uh, Bible apps on your phone. I want you to at least read the Word of God. At least read the verse of the day. At least read the verse of the day. But don't stop there, people. Come on. You know, you spend. If you look at your phone, your phone will tell you how much time you spend on each thing. Mine does. And my goal every week is that I spend more time with Jesus and more time in this Word than I do on anything else on that phone. And I, you know, and I, I could tell you this morning that reading the word, this is, I call this my, my big girl Bible. You know, I could probably wipe somebody out with it. Uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, I like to read this a lot better than I do my phone because I don't, it's not as distracting as my phone. You know, and there's something about the brain that your brain actually retains more when you read a written print. You also remember more when you write it down. That's proven fact. I was reading this morning that only about 7% in 19 or 20, 2018 and 2017, I believe. I guess they didn't do a statistic in 2020. Wonder why. Uh, but anyway, uh, they uh, said that 7% or less of Christians actually read their word. 7% or less. And we wonder what's wrong with us. You know? We got yes, we do. We got dull swords, or we don't even got a sword. We got a toothpick. <laughs> Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. That means God made the world, word and world and word <laughs> world. He made the world. Amen. He spoke it into existence you want to know how the world got here god spoke it into existence yes, he, he spoke it Amen. like well I, I believe like pastor does i believe in the big bang theory too god spoke bang it happened you know i like sm lockridge he said he says that um uh he said god spoke when there was nothing there he spoke he hung something on nothing and it became the world you know, and he hung it in there. He hung the world on nothing. He spoke it into existence. He spoke us into existence. Amen. Amen. He spoke us into existence. So many people have an identity crisis because we don't, they don't know that God created them. He created you in his image. He formed you out of his, the belly of your mama. He formed you out of the belly of your mama. You can come from a darn monkey. I like monkeys. They're funny. They make me laugh. They make me know that God's got a sense of humor. Yes, Amen. He does. God's got a great sense of humor. He created me. <laughs> That's supposed to be funny. <laughs> oh, boy. I want you to go home today. I want you to read chapter 11. I'm going to try not to read it all to you today. But it says, but, verse 6 says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. Wow. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. He is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. That was a month, I remember an old blind man named Brother Willie Cook. I miss him, man, out of a lot of people that have passed. Man, I miss him a lot. He used to have a song that's called One Day Religion Just Won't Do. You can go to church on Sunday, but you go out and act like a hypocrite on Monday. Your one day religion ain't going to do. And let me tell you, if you're just going to church, 
every Sunday and you're, you're a rub-a-dub-dub, two-minute tub, I don't know, that kind of a relationship with God ain't going to get you no more. You need an everyday relationship with Jesus Christ. I don't believe in religion. I am not religious. I have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You know what a lot of our problem is, though? We like to do all the talking. Hello, Jesus, I'd like a burger and some fries, and can you make sure my mortgage gets paid and my gas gets paid? And God, you know we need groceries and so-and-so is sick and blah, blah, blah. And lady, da. Thank you, amen, I'm done. I'll see you later. And God's like, uh, 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 hang on. I, I wanted to tell you something. We don't give him time to talk to us sometimes. Sometimes we don't shut it all down and say, okay, Lord, you know, it's your turn. He said to tell me, that was, that was what he told me at the end of last year was, Rachel, we're going to do something new now. I was like, all right, what are we doing? He's like, you going to shut up. And I was like, all right. <laughs> and he's like, you going to listen first. And I was like, okay. And he was like, then you can make your petitions known. He's like, I'll give you time to make your petitions known. You don't have to rush God. If you ain't got enough time at home, which most of us don't, then you can talk to him in your car. Please talk to Jesus in your car instead of your phone. <laughs> please, please, please don't text and drive. Talk to Jesus instead, okay? I'm trying to save lives here, people. I'm trying to save lives. <laughs> yes, Jesus. But he wanted me to make sure that, he's, that you knew that he's faithful, and his faithfulness is never ending. His faithfulness is never ending. That's why our prayer should be never ending. Paul said to pray without ceasing. Pray all the time. Pray when you're working. Pray. Pray when you're on your knees grout in the tub. That's what I do now. I like to grout. Grout the tub. Grout the tub, you know. On the ladder. Dear Jesus, please help me not fall off this thing. Amen. You know. Whatever you're doing, pray. Pray while you're doing it. Pray. If you're mad, tell God about it. I had to release, I said, thank God, God helped me to release something the other day. That was, I was hurt about it. Some of you, I really feel this in my spirit too, is that you've got to release that hurt. You've got to release that, whatever it is that's holding you back in your heart. Release it. Release it. Give it to God. You know, give it to God. Give it to Jesus. He's the only one that can fix it. I love that song too. He can fix it. Jesus will fix it. Amen. By faith, Noah, being warned of God, things not seen as yet, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world, and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. There are so many great faith stories in the book of faith. This is the book of faith in Hebrews chapter 11. And I could take time and we could read about them all, and they're all great. They are all great. And there's women in here, too. Oh, yeah. Amen. God can use a woman, too. He can use a donkey. He can use whatever he wants. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Well, that's right. <coughs> Praise you, Lord. Verse 17. I want to jump there. I love Abraham. Anybody love Abraham? Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Now I have the, I think it was a Jimmy Swagger Bible. And I have, this is a study Bible. If you ain't got a study Bible, then I, I would suggest you get a good study Bible. And mine says, even though God stopped the event, in the mind of Abraham, it was already done. And if you know the story, you know that angel had to really stop Abraham from killing his son. And he did what God wanted him to. Uh, he was trying to do what God had told him to do. And I can't even imagine. Can you even imagine? Can you even imagine sacrificing your son? And this is a type and shadow of Christ. Right here was Abraham and Isaac. It also says that the Lord had already told Abraham he would send the Redeemer into the world in order to redeem mankind. 
But now he shows the patriarch how it was to be done, which was by the death and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, his one and only son. I was listening to Billy Graham the other day, and he was saying, God's not going to understand why you couldn't give up sin. And if you think about it, if we try to think about it, let me put it that way, if we try to think about God gave everything. He gave everything. He gave his precious son, Jesus Christ, to be spit on, beat, mocked, made fun of, hair plucked out, stripes laid on his back, nailed to a cross, hung on a cross, made fun of on a cross. Became sin for us, the very thing that God hates. Jesus became, that's why he had to turn his head. God had to turn his head from his only son. Don't you know that's why the earth quaked that day? I cannot imagine how mad God was. Oh, hmm. I cannot imagine how mad God was that day. How hurt he was. But Jesus, he loved us and God loves us too. He loved us too. That's why he sent his son. That's why he gave his son. From the time that Adam sinned, he already knew the cross was in the works. He already knew. And Jesus took all of our sin on that old rugged cross so that we could have that redeemed relationship with God Almighty. Because he purchased you. He bought you back. He bought you back. He paid the price. Oh, I love the precious Lamb of God. The precious Lamb of God who was slain for us. He was slain for you. He wasn't just killed. He was slain. It was brutal. It was bloody. And you got to remember that. we got to remember, you know, God's been saying, Rachel, you remember? Sometimes we forget. Sometimes we forget where God took us from. Sometimes we forget where God took us from. He's like, you remember what you used to be? How you used to act? What you used to treat people like? What people used to treat you like? <laughs> you remember. Yeah. And I always like to say, I'm not who I used to be. But I'm not quite what I need to be yet. And I believe that when we pass in death, or if God comes to get us, God will still be working on us until then. <laughs> you know, he'll still be working on us till then if we allow him. He told me something this year, a little scary. You know, we don't like change, do we? We don't like change. He said, I'll change your life. I'll change your life. I'll change your life. I'll change your life. If you'll let me. And my response to God was like, God, I already thought you changed my life. Haven't you? I know you have. You want to know his response? I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. He ain't, I ain't going to say it like Texas. He ain't done yet. He ain't, he isn't done yet. Amen. He isn't done yet. If you ain't in death, he ain't done yet. Amen. If you're still here, he's not done yet. And he is faithful to do in you what he has called you to do. And he will give you the tools to do it. And he'll give you the anointed too. But you got to be faithful to him too. Amen. you got to pay a price too. And part of that price is... Reading your word every day. Read it. Praying every day. Yes. Pushing that plate away just a little bit sometimes. We don't like to talk about that. We don't like to talk about that. I love my nacho, nacho woman. Nacho. Remember that song? Y'all don't remember the song. Nacho, nacho man. 
Everybody wants to be a nacho man. Come on. You know? <laughs> uh, I love my nacho. Uh, but, oh, boy, Jesus, help me. Lord, where did I go? Uh, <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, we're talking about Abraham and nachos all at the same time. <laughs> How he, God showed Abraham his sacrifice through Isaac. Amen. And I want to go to, I think I want to go to Psalms chapter 91, verse 4. It says that he shall cover you. This is one of pastor's favorite scriptures. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings shall you trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Amen. He's a God you can trust. Amen. He is a shield and a buckler. When you are afraid or when you are troubled or when you, the enemy tries to come against you, all you have to do, I, I, I preach a sermon once, I, I got to go to my daddy. Yeah. You go to your heavenly father. You go to your heavenly father and you allow him to cover you with his wings. And there's no better protection than God Almighty. No better protection than God Almighty. He will cover you. He will keep you. He will protect you. You can trust in God. Oh, when man wants to talk about you, you know they do. You have a God that will fight for you. You have a God that will fight for you. All you have to say is, God, you see and you know. This is the other thing I heard this week, and I'll try to shut her down, is we're wor we worry too much. We worry too much about things you cannot control. You have no control. It doesn't even matter if you think you have control. You think you have, sometimes as a parent, you think you've got control of your kids. Wait till they're teenagers. Wait till they're about 26 and 28. You ain't got nothing. And they'll sure show you and prove it to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And we all did it. Amen. We all got the keychain and the T-shirt that we did it to our mom and dad. Okay? <laughs> but let me tell you something. God is always in control. and Always in control. You want to worry? Give it to God. He can handle it. He can handle it. Somebody needs to hear that this morning. You got troubles, and you think God can't handle it? Come on now. Come on. Cast all your cares upon Jesus, for he cares for you. He cares more about you than you care about yourself. Amen. He loves you. That's why he gave his only son. It does us no good. The Bible says it does no good for us to worry. That we cannot, can I make myself taller? I wish. I wish I was a little taller. It ain't happening, so I'm thankful for what God gave me. Amen. Can I add any hair to my head? No. Pastor keeps trying, but... <laughs> Sorry, Pastor. <laughs> uh, but some of us are just blessed with, you know, less between us and God. Amen. Praise the Lord. I had to make up myself. <laughs> but we shouldn't worry, you know. He told me that this week. He said, Rachel, don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. I'll take care of it. He'll take care of your job. He cares. He'll take care of your bosses. He'll take care of the food. He'll take care of your bills. He'll take care of, oh, okay, somebody didn't like that. He is a big enough God to have control over your finances. Give them to God. I did that once. God, I was so worried about my bills. We were so far in debt. And I put them in a box. And I think I brought them to church. And we prayed over them. And I tell you what, God is faithful. He will never let you down. Ever. Ever, 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 ever. Put him first. Put him first. And God will never, ever, ever let you down. Say this one more time just so make sure you get it. 
I want you to go home going, dear God, what did that woman even say? You know, sometimes I do that. I have to go back. I, I test myself on Wednesday. What did pastor preach on Sunday? And then I'll sit there and think about it. <laughs> it was good. It was anointed. But what did he say? You know, <laughs> what did he say? Uh, come on now. You know you do it. I want you to get this because I want you to take it home. I don't care if you have to write it down on your car, your door, wherever. God is faithful. He is faithful. He's faithful to every generation. He's never let one down. He is faithful. I've seen all kinds. I'm, I'm sorry. i got to say this too. I've seen all kinds of renewing this year. Yep. Read your Bible in 2023. Praise the Lord. Do it. Do it. Shut up and get her done. Amen. Get it done. Pray. I've seen, I've seen more reading challenges, and, and I'm thankful for them. I mean, I hope people join them and actually do them, you know. And I'm like, yes, I'm in Mark. Fixing to be in Luke. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I've been trying to read through my Bible. Now makes probably about the third year. But, you know, it's okay. I keep writing stuff down and keep keep drawing things. I like to try to draw <laughs> and color and do all kinds of stuff. But, anyway, it helps me remember. But read your word. Be, be you in the word of God. Be you. God doesn't expect you to be anybody else. Be you. Be you. I don't care if it takes you 100 years to get through the book of Psalms. God told me once, he, I read Ruth, and he was like, read it again. Second time. I was like, all right. Third time, read it again. I was like, God, how many times am I going to be reading Ruth? Till I get it. Till I get whatever it is that God wanted me to get. You know? So read it again. If you need to read it again, read it again. Read it again. Praise the Lord. All right, we're going to shut down. I promise. Jesus, Lord God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you that you are faithful. Speak it. Speak it, Lord God. Help us to speak it. That's what I was trying to say, Lord. Speak it. Whatever it is, Lord God. And help us to be doers of the word, Lord God, and not just talkers, Lord God. Because doing, Lord God, we have to do. Lord God, your harvest is white, Lord God. Jesus, help us to show you everywhere we go, Lord God. We have a world that needs you so desperately, Lord Jesus. I ask you to help us to touch them and help them to come to salvation, Lord God. Deliverance and, Lord God, healing, Lord God, Jesus. Lord, Father God, Jesus. Lord, I thank you. Can you tell him thank you this morning? Thank you, God, for what you've already done. God, thank you for what you're going to do, but thank you for what you've already done, Lord. I'm so thankful for your son, Jesus. I'm so thankful, Lord God, for what you've done, Lord God. I'm so thankful for the privilege, Lord God, to speak about faith this morning. Lord, Father God, Jesus, you're a precious, precious Savior, Lord God, and we love you this morning, and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Love you all this morning. These altars are always open. Just remember, he's always faithful.
Don't forget Wednesday night at 7.15. Give everyone, shake everyone's hand, and y'all be blessed and have a wonderful day. Blessings to you.